Hey, good morning guys. I'm here for the week, just giving John a hand. I've got to put in some drainage to do with the tanking system that we put in. Originally, I was going to use this closed cell system. I'm not going to use that now. One is because of the cost, it's like another four grand dearer than using a, a standard 50 mil over the top. The other thing is the tanking system, the way it works. The guy I was talking to, Dave from Delta Membranes, so definitely check them out. They're the people that we're using. They've been doing tanking for absolutely years and years and years. What he was saying, Tyne, you actually get a better waterproofing system if you can put the insulation on top of the in tanking which goes on the actual basement slab floor and to produce the actual 90 mil by 50 mil channel all around the peripherals by using a bit of insulation a bit of batten screwing against the edge side of it we can then dig all of the insulation out and then we've got a beautiful channel running all the way around the peripherals of the actual basement so that's what we're going to be doing I'm going to clear the rubbish which is down here get the invert of the drain which is there because then I can get all my main drains in just to make sure everything works well I can see what I can then play with afterwards okay guys so let's crack on and get on with it The one thing I want to elaborate is drainage. People say, oh, it's got to be like this, got to be like that. I've laid thousands and thousands and thousands, I mean, literally thousands of meters of pipe. And yes, one in 40 is the ideal fall. But in real terms, and when you're on a massive site, it's not always possible. I was always taught many, many years ago by an amazing civil guy. Um, his nickname was Pepperani, brilliant guy. There's nothing that bloke didn't know about civils. And the one thing he taught me, he said, Tone, what you've got to do is think about the one in 80 and the one in 44 and the one in 64 and this is what you've got to do is obviously the ideal is one in 40 to get the solids away with the water but that is not always possible as we know and he says if you know what's coming in the back end of the run like a gully like sinks with just water and everything else you can then drop down to one in 60 or a one in 80 he always advised me not to go any more than that because obviously it's that thing there's always a small tolerance and the other thing he taught me is always make sure you work from the back end in other words you work from the main chamber where you actually then going into then working back into your building that is key he said always do it that way never do it the reverse way around so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just show you how i do it there's going to be people out there doing different ways and you go tony you've got to do a one in four you can't do one in sixty one it's what i was taught been digging a trench along here we're just going to chamfer off this corner point here and put a y on there because we've got foul coming up from the wall so we've got a lot of force coming through down here it's only a very small run it then goes on to a 45 i wouldn't really normally ever Ever do 90s and the only time I do 90s internally is when I'm just got water passing through the actual pipe so I'll do a 45 here I'll run across into a Y not a T and then what I'll then do is run the pipe along here I'll actually then put a 90 a nice soft 90 here which will then take all the water for the sink for the kitchen I'll then put a 90 on here and the reason I put a 90 because all it is is taking water from the gullies outside because obviously the front of the house the base and all the storm water upstairs and on the other side through here all I've got coming through there is water then from the utility so that's how you got to think you got to think about what is actually going in the back end and if you've got loads of water flushing through then you can start to creep your one in 40 to go one in 60 one in 80. I use that as always my god so let's go and have a look and see what they're doing over there with the chamber okay so James it's the first time you've done drainage isn't it mate yeah. so the key thing is is that this one in 40 fall is the ideal you have to think about all of the the water the back water now what I mean by by backwater it means that wherever your last toilet flushes through is then any then water then after that point so in other words you could have dishwasher you could have your sink you could have gullies if there's any solid that gets suddenly starts sticking there's loads of other further water washing through the system and that's why you can go down to a one in 80 now obviously i don't go past one in 80 some people i have known do do that but for me it's always right i'll try and get one in 40 if i can't get one in 40 i'll then go to one in 50 if i can't get one in 50 i go to one in 60 then one in 70 and then one in 80. if i'm going between those two parameters knowing that i've got a load of back water there then i'm absolutely happy what i want to do is i'll teach you everything i know now it's not going to be for everybody out there because i know people have their own different ways it's just the way i've been taught i've never had any issues i'm just going to teach james exactly the same way so the first thing we've got is a salt glazed pipe here mate okay salt glazed pipe is what used to be laid in the old victorians they still lay them now but generally most people 
people lay the four inch plastic or 150 mil plastic or even bigger and that normally then goes to then concrete or salt glaze. Now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be putting a 450 chamber in, I'll start class that. We're then going to be using a clay to plastic adapter. Now this is a clay to plastic adapter, it's got two ways to tighten it, either with a slotted screwdriver or with the actual screwdriver connection that goes around this nut or the bolt shaped head here, okay. I always use a decent size screwdriver. The other key thing is that when you cut your salt glaze pipe you make sure that you cut the collar off because what you'll find as you've seen earlier there was a collar on this wasn't there yeah. where the other pipe slipped into it. Those are always problematic for cracking and breaking later on down the line and we know from this salt glaze going into the main Victorian drain that's still there we know we've got 600 mil room before it goes into that. Now the one thing I will do because I can get pipe down internally into that salt glaze which is this piece of pipe here I'll actually cut this fit in 450 mil, I'll connect it into this and then I'll actually then thread the chamber into the salt glaze and then I'll put this fit in on. So in other words, that gives me a nice bit of runoff as well. I'm not just relying on this fitting going on there, which would do the job. But if you can imagine when it hits here, if you can imagine the salt glaze then comes to here. So you have a, like a lip between the pipe and the salt glaze. It has a, a latch point where it can stick onto any product which is in then, I don't like that. Wherever I can extend that pipe through, into that actual main salt glaze, I'll always do that. It's just a slightly better job, mate, okay? The tools that you need, screwdriver, the hammer. I always use this because if you've got fittings, great example, fittings like this, if it was on the end of the pipe, I'll get that fitting off. If I can't twist it off, you know, I'll try and twist it off first. But look, that's quite, try and get that apart. It's quite sturdy, isn't it, mate? What I'll end up doing is getting the side of the hammer like that, and I'll tap it like this. But once I've got it apart, I'll always check the rubber to make sure it's good and solid, no splits in it, make sure it's okay so I can reuse it. The ideal is that you don't reuse fittings. The only reason I'm using this, you can tell these are new fittings, but in some reason, put these together, decided not to use it, and then but not pulled them apart. So screwdriver, hammer. The other thing is make sure you use the right lubricant. Don't use, as a lot of people, they use washing up liquid. You want, I always buy this polypipe lubricant. Brush makes it easy to apply around the actual collar of the actual fitting, as well as the rubber. So don't just put it on one area here, you put it on this area, but then also you then put it onto the actual fitting itself. If you're setting offsets, always remember this line, because that line will always tell you, wherever you're with your pipe, as you twist it, look, you see it moves the offset? So you can actually turn and twist it to move further up and down, you see? That's like on a nice level plane. As soon as I twist it inside the fitting, it's actually now pointing down. And then the other thing is the grinder, headphones. Now, normally I'd advise safety glasses, but I don't have safety glasses because I need my normal glasses on. And the other thing that uh, Pete bought this, seeing it online, thought it'd be a great tool because we used to do it with the file, a really heavy duty rasp pea gravel, which we're going to set the chamber in because you always set all pipe work into 10 mil. What we're going to do is we'll start to install this and I'll show you how that next process is. Let's do it, crack on with that, shall we mate? Boom. <laughs> What we're going to do, James, is we've got an off-cut of pipe now and we're going to cut this now to 450 because what I was discussing earlier, so I can just slip it into the salt glaze fit in there, okay? <laughs> Now the one thing I do whenever I put a fitting in, I don't just push it on, I always give it a bit of a twist like that, yeah? There you go, look how easy that went, yeah? Beautiful, look at that, there you go. What we'll now do is we'll slip this on. See what I'm doing now, James? Yeah. And then all I'm gonna do is slip that now into here and then push that onto the salt glaze. That now is going to run into that salt glaze. We know that's 600 mil. That plastic is 450, isn't it? Yeah. So all I've gotta do now is set that level and then tighten that up. I know my run is running over there that way, isn't it, mate, yeah? Yeah. In fact, if I take the ring off, you'll probably see it a little bit easier. I know this run's gonna run in line over here. I've got a slight offset there and then I'll end up tightening that up now. So in fact, if you want to tighten that up, will I hold it there, James? Now we've got that set there, 
the first thing we're going to do is look at what the level now one thing with my chambers i always like to have a little fall on them but what i'm going to do is i always set it so you see where the bubble is there a third of them in the bubble that's how i set it like that and the reason i do that because i know then it will wash through there beautifully okay what i'll then do is i'll actually now pull some of that stone get i'll probably end up getting a bit more pea gravel so what i'll do is i'll get myself a brick and i'll support this chamber underneath there now obviously that's too much of a fall at the moment so i'm just going to move my stone until i get it where i want it like that. there you go that's exactly where i want it mate yeah that's pretty good there look I'll just twist it there there you go nice and level that way we've got a lovely little four going that way haven't we mate okay yep. and what i will then do is that then if you can imagine as the pepper army guy used to say you've now got your datum so everything from this point here which is then classed as the invert now the invert is the bottom of this chamber you see it mm -hmm. And all I'll do now is I'll take that datum point here, inside here, and then I'll measure all the way distance there and work out my fall and what I can get away with. So let's get a measuring tape, measure from there to there and see what the fall is, mate, okay? All right. Forty-five foot, mate. Forty-five foot times it by twelve inches. Five hundred and forty-four. Oh, Will said 544. 540. Oh, so close, but yes, so far. We've got 45 foot, haven't we? So 45 foot and there's 12 inches, so it equals then 540 inches, doesn't it? Yeah. So what we've got to do is that if we then divide that then by a 1 in 40, how many inches does that mean from the bottom of the invert? So in other words, we took the bottom of the pipe to obviously where we've got to lift it to. If you imagine, that's the, the, the line, the level line. That's perfectly level. So if we divide 40 to every inch, then what's that then? 40 is into that, mate, into 540. So it's 13.5. So if you then had that goes into 13.5 40 does doesn't it yeah so that means we've got to lift up that invert 13.5 inches now you and i both know that's going to be pretty impossible because the pipe's going to be above the clay line there isn't it we don't want that so let's now do it say one in 50 see how much we've got to lift it there mate so that's 10.8 that's getting better isn't it now that's 50 now what's 60 mate let's see what that is nine, nine inches. inches that's even better what's uh, one in 70 so 7.7 7. that's getting better isn't it and let's just do 80 to see what 80 is 6.75 now i don't think we need that so it means from this position here all the way up to there i actually think we'll probably get away with a one in 60 but the only way we'll actually really really know is by getting the laser level now getting the dating point here and then going over to there getting the dating point with the laser level and we can see what we can play with but now we've got our idea of what our measurements are we can see what from the bottom of the pipe because one thing we don't want to do is we don't want the top of the pipe coming above this soil line do we we want a bit of stone above it don't we so let's get the laser level okay. set up and let's sort that out okay I'm going to do a couple of checks. The first check I'm going to do is I'm going to be actually putting the laser level on where the top of the pipe comes because if I know where the top of the pipe comes in over there and I've lifted it by whatever inches I need to, I can then see whether it's going to come above the soil line. So that's the first thing we're going to do, Matt, okay? So there, got yeah. it? That's the top. I'm just going to put top of pipe, okay? T-O-P, top. Let's do our first fall, which is the 13.5, isn't it, to the yeah. top of the point. That was the top of the pipe that we just marked, okay? So if you now measure from there to there, 13 uh, and a half inches, wasn't it? Yeah, 13.5, which is basically there. So what we're going to do, that's going to say that's number one. What was the next measurement? The next measurement was 10.8, uh, wasn't it? So measure 10.8 there then, mate. Now remember, the first one's one in 44. So that's the the next one and that's going to be up a circle and so we know that's number two okay so the next nine. one was nine wasn't it so that's number three and then what's the next one 7.7 7.7 if i hold this yeah. uh, where we need it just below the soil line and we'll move this up and down here until this marker tells us what fall that we're going to get to okay okay mate so if you now set it to one in 50 mate that's it there you go, it's just below that line, isn't it? Yeah. So if we use it just a fraction, just on that line with each of the collars. That means then we've just got a lovely run then all the way through there. So that's a one in 54 that we're gonna then run all the way through there now, mate, okay?
Don't try and push, always turn and push. Okay, that's it, keep pushing, there you go. How easy is that? Lovely, isn't it, mate, yeah? Basically, we want that now to come here, don't we, like that? You see it? Because then that, where that is, we can then, the pipe can come here to a 45 here. Just see it there, just crown in a bit there. So all you need to do then is just... There you go. Now what we'll do is we'll put that in there, get the spinny bit. There you go, look at that. Beautiful all the way around, isn't it? Just a bit of a tip, just a bit easier working away from yourself like that. You don't need a lot of pressure because the sharpness of the blade will just take it off for you, mate. All right. going to do now is run this one off to here and then what we'll then do is that when we've got that 45 in there we'll get that T in there can't we and get that one in okay there's another join here so I'll flood this area here with pea gravel when I come to do it and obviously there'll be a connection here so I'll literally flood all this as well here as well okay mate but the reason I love to get all my pipe in loose like this it means that I can then set the pipe absolutely perfectly with a line because then I know it's dead straight dead level there's no question it's not doing all this sort of carry on next thing we're going to run another three metre pipe up there. Twist and push, go on. There you go, that's it. And I want you to just bring these fittings just underneath that line like that, yeah? And what you can do is you can pack them, but pack them with bricks at this point, because I want to fill this with stone, you see. We'll get the other fitting on there, and then lock it off with bricks either side so it can't move, like I've done there. I'll get that dead centre there at the pipe, which is nice, and then I'll just lock it off like that. So when I pour the pea gravel there, it has left with chance to move. Yeah. Because it's slightly lower than the line, I can then just tweak it as I need to. So if you now line that all the way through, put a brick either side there, and then line that through perfectly through. So when I come back, we can start filling it with pea gravel, can't we, mate? All right. When you've got a connection like that, you can just give it a bit of a twist, like that. Put a bit of support underneath it there. I can just bend it back like that, you see? So the key is, is that line has to just come fractionally off that collar. So what I always do, I always make sure I set my pipe in. So now you can see the line too high compared to the pipe. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cheat a little bit, bring it up on the pipe, let some stone, and push it in again. There we go, exactly where I want it now. I call that feathering. And the reason I do that, it means that if I suddenly stands on that pipe now, he's not going to go anywhere. And what I'll do is I'll keep checking it, I'll put more stone in, but that's how I do it when I feather in a pipe in. So I just wanted to talk to you about this chamber. A lot of people will put this inside and I didn't want to actually do that. I wanted to keep it outside of the property. So I had a chat with Delta Membranes. Now the technical guy there, Dave, there's nothing that below I don't know about basement conversions, tanking everything out, but definitely check out the link down below. He recommended this Delta version three and it's a dual pump. So if one fails, there's another one there. The other thing, there's non-return valves on them as well. So basically if the water backs up on the sewerage system and everything else, it can't go back into the actual basement itself. What I'm going to be doing with this, I'm going to be setting this. Now, let me explain. You've got a two inch outlet coming out of here. You then got another one of these outlets that's coming to this section here, which allows all the cables then to go in. And the other thing it's got then, inlets, it's got one, two, three inlets. And so what I've done is I've dug myself a nice, decent sized hole because I want to make sure I can connect onto these quite easily. 
Now what's gonna happen, you can see I've actually allowed myself plenty of space because I'm gonna end up getting a 90 degree off here, coming up here, and then obviously tapping into the two pipes that are coming across here because we've got a peripheral channel on the outside and then that will then have a little outlet to a four inch connection. So we'll connect the two pipes together and then come with one pipe then coming across. But I need to make sure the top of this comes flush with the top of that. So I've got to build it up quite a bit to about here, like that. I can then decide exactly where I want this outlet and how that pipe is going to come through here. I'll probably end up bossing onto, I'm probably going to go to that one actually, because I just think it'll be easier. If I set the chamber there, pipe can come across, drop down and just plug into the side instead of sweeping around here. I'll put a nice slow bend on there and then that can actually then come out, shoot across at 45 degrees. With these, that's a brilliant chamber. Let's crack on. Now the one thing I will do with this chamber, I will actually concrete it in up to this level here. I'll concrete this section in, make sure there's P gravel up to there. The rest of it will be concrete so it can't move. Let's see what it's like now. Oh, it's close, it's close. We're nearly finished with the drains. We're not quite complete. Let me show you what we've been up to. We put all the chambers in, but under control of being the past. What we have been doing is we're going to get in all the actual pea gravel in. We've got all the chambers in. Now, one thing if you notice, we put cover plates on everything because we don't want any rubbish going down them. And we put non-return valves in on the main two runs. It's really important because this is a basement conversion. And if we get any backwash of water, if there's any flooding within the vicinity, we need to make sure none of the water goes back then into the basement. What we'll actually do is clear the stone away like this, bed underneath with a ring, put a small amount of mortar around that and then put a cover plate on. But it'll only be a small one. The reason being is that we always need to make sure we gain access to this so we can change the mechanism within the side. If it ever fails, you just undo them four bolts, it'll come off. The other thing we have done is on the chamber, this is actually the main sump chamber for the basement. Now, a lot of the time people say, Tan, why is it in the house? I don't actually like to put them inside the properties. Wherever I can, I always put them outside the properties. Now this chamber itself, this will actually be hidden. When we put the new chamber on top, the cover plate as I call it, we'll actually take this off. This will, you won't leave this on at all. It's actually got two pumps in there and this pipe that you can see coming out of here, that's the actual cable pipe to allow us then to feed the pipe and the cable in all the way around to that position so we can lose it through the stud work then to get to the actual main electricity board. We've also then taken the pipe as the early video across in here, bunged it into here and it goes then straight into this manhole here which is lovely as you can see here we've got another non-return valve here obviously put another smaller ring around it and then a cover plate on it so we've always got the access then to it the other two things that we've got to do is that so we've got to put a gully in over there because we've got a flat roof going in and then we've got the storm water coming off the main roof over here we've got the gully then going in on this side here that needs to be addressed and done we'll do that uh, in the next few days so internally we've actually got then the pipe work over here so we've got this pipe work that's going through the stud work through to the bathrooms up on the next floor and then also taking the storm some of the uh, storm that's up there if you come inside here guys we then got a soil then which is picking up certain bathrooms certain toilets we've got the storm that's coming through from the front of the house which is on this section which then goes all the way through we're gonna have some lovely box work here this is gonna be the shower cubicle area that's where that is that's the pipe then for the waste on that and what we've done is taken all the water from the front and we then put it into the back and it's back washing all of these runs which is absolutely brilliant so I'm not worried about any solids anything any paper or anything getting stuck down the system and then further up here we then got the utility going in here we got all this done so it means that at that point when we put the sinks in everything the water then goes straight away and then just around the corner here we've got this vertical soil we've got another bathroom going up further up onto the front of the building so which is the main bathroom so that's going to be taking all the solids and all the waste that's going to come through morning will how are you doing morning sir there's another waste then coming out that's then for the main sink run that goes all the way through i was saying earlier about backwashing and this one here is for the outside gully work what's going on at that 
with all the echo drains which you're going to take and then it backwashes them through all of the system. So you've always got to be thinking about when you're doing old drains, old Victorian properties, renovations, you've got to be thinking about is it a combination drain? Which it will be more and more likely. Most of the time you can't put a soaker in because the ground's not a good enough quality because the percolation test is not brilliant. So and, and then obviously we've spoken to the building control here. They're quite happy for us to plug in and utilize the actual combination drain at the back. They uh, said, look, we, we just cannot physically get a soak away working here. So well, that's what we've done, connect it all back up and it's been brilliant. But obviously you cannot do that on new site. It's a completely different storm and foul a run completely separately. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that notification bell. Hit that subscribe button so we can get to 100,000 and definitely check out True Trade. If you want to run your business really, really efficiently and make money, go to True Trade. Take care. Yeah. That'll do, won't it? Yeah.